Hey everyone, it's Christina here. I'm curious, have you ever felt a little confused about which drinks and beverages are okay to have while you're trying to lose weight and get healthy? I mean, there's certain ones like soda, for example, that we all know are not good for us, but then there's a lot of other ones that feels like there's some gray area around and we're not really sure if you know certain drinks will are healthy, if they'll help us lose weight, or if they will get in the way of our health and weight loss goals. So that's what I wanna talk about today, is really clearing that up and giving you some, some guidelines on what drinks are healthy and what drinks will be supportive of weight loss and which ones will not. Because the truth is that what you drink really does have a big impact on whether or not you lose weight, on how much energy you have throughout the day, even on things like your risk for diabetes and heart disease. So it's a really important topic that I haven't really covered before. So there's no time like the present. Um, so I will go through, I'm gonna talk about why you know, it's so important to make sure we're drinking the right things, which ones to avoid and why that is, and then what to drink as well. So I'm curious before I dive in, are there any particular drinks that you have just wondered about whether it's healthy or not? Let me know in the comments, whether you're watching live or the replay, I can always come back and answer you. Um, but I would be curious to hear, and then I can talk about those as I go through the live today. So, the one reason that I've decided that this is an important thing to talk about is because over the past, I would say, year or so, I've had a lot more women come to me um, as coaching clients who are drinking Diet Coke or other sugary drinks. And so, you know, it seemed for a long time like there weren't a lot of people drinking these kinds of things, and more recently, it's come up. And so, like I said, it really does impact your health and your weight loss efforts, so it's important for us to discuss. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna cover different types of drinks. So we're gonna talk about drinks that just naturally have sugar in them or have sugar added. We're gonna talk about the types of drinks that have artificial sweeteners like Diet Coke. And then we're also going to talk about um, some of the other like healthier options that, that use things like Stevia, for example. So we'll cover the whole gamut of different types of beverages and hopefully get all your questions answered by the end. So let's start with the drinks that have sugar added to them. And so, you know, as I've been looking more into this, sugar sweetened beverages are probably the top source of added sugar in the American diet. And liquid sugar is really one of the most addictive foods out there. And when you combine liquid sugar with caffeine in, you know, like a frappuccino, that makes it even more addictive. So it really is a pretty important topic to talk about. And so when I'm talking about these kinds of beverages, it includes things like fruit juice that just naturally have sugar in them. But then I'm also talking about things like soda, all those fancy drinks at Starbucks that have sugar or sweeteners added to them. I'm talking even about, you know, things like creamers that have sugar in them or even like honey. I, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm adding honey, so I'm okay. Well, honey is still sugar. So, and even alcohol. Alcohol naturally contains sugars. So that's what I'm talking about first, are all of those drinks that just naturally have sugar in them or sugar has been added. And so, First of all, there, I, there's in the American, let me check my notes here, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, there was a paper that looked at like 30 different studies and they found clear evidence that linked sugar sweetened beverages to weight gain. And you know, the problem, there's many problems with drinking liquid sugar. So one of the biggest problems is that when we're having drinks that have sugar in them, they don't have fiber or other things that slow down the digestion of that sugar. So what happens is when you're drinking liquid sugar, so any drink that has sugar added to it, it's gonna hit your bloodstream pretty quickly and spike your blood sugar. And so when your blood sugar gets spiked, then your body has to release a lot of insulin to pull all that blood sugar out to get your blood sugar back to a normal level. Well, here's what happens. If your body can't use up that blood, that extra glucose or blood sugar, or if your the insulin can't store it in your liver or muscles, then your body will convert that sugar into fat. 
So if you're drinking a whole bunch of liquid sugar and spiking your blood sugar quickly, it's more likely that some of that will get converted into fat and your body will be in fat storage mode. It's not going to be in a mode where you can burn fat. So that's one issue with drinking, you know, soda, fruit juice, all of those liquid sugars. But then in addition to that, when your blood sugar is spiking quickly and a lot of insulin is released, your blood sugar will then plummet because it, it tends to not just get back to normal, but it actually can drop too low. And so that sets up this blood sugar roller coaster. And that means that you're gonna feel more tired. You might have a crashing feeling later in the day. You might um, feel like have more cravings. When your blood sugar gets too low, we crave sugar to get back to normal. Or maybe you'll feel more anxious, irritable, on edge. I mean, there's all kinds of problems that happen when our blood sugar is bouncing all over the place. So that's one problem with drinking sugary drinks is that they're gonna impact your blood sugar quite a bit. But then in addition to that, um, another issue with this liquid sugar is that it's usually just empty calories. And what studies have found is that most people don't reduce how much they're eating because they're drinking these extra calories. Because these sugary drinks, they don't make you feel full or satisfied. They don't trigger your, your satiation feeling, that leptin, which makes you feel full and satisfied. So we tend to like drink these extra calories and then we're also eating the normal amount. So it's just empty calories not providing you with fuel or nutrition or good source of energy. So, so that is just a couple of the issues with drinking sugary drinks. Let's move on now to those diet drinks. So things that have artificial sweeteners added to them. And the first thing that I really wanna make sure to like hammer home is that a lot of times drinks and food will advertise sugar-free. Well, just because it says sugar-free does not mean that we're off the hook. Because usually when it says sugar-free, that means that instead they have used an artificial sweetener. Or even, I think sometimes I've seen people say sugar-free and then they use stevia. So there's still some kind of sweetener in that product. So Diet Coke, it might be sugar-free, but it still usually uses aspartame or you know one of those other artificial sweeteners. And so here's the problem. Dr. Mark Hyman, who's a functional medicine doctor, he says that people who drink diet drinks regularly have a 200% increased risk of weight gain and a 67% increased risk of diabetes. So, I mean, oftentimes we think we're making the better choice by having Diet Coke or Crystal Light or, you know, whatever, whatever beverage it is with artificial sweeteners. And that's just not the case. So these artificial sweeteners will disrupt your hormones, your hunger hormones, so that you uh, like misread the signal so that you don't feel full and you don't feel satisfied. And so it triggers overeating. Um, there's also been a couple really interesting studies done with rats. And so there was one study where rats were fed artificially sweetened food and the study, the, the researchers found that those artificially sweetened foods slowed down their metabolism and triggered the rats to actually eat more calories than if they were given sugar fed foods. So artificial sweeteners may potentially have more problems than even sugar in different ways. They're both problematic. Then there was another study that I thought was really interesting too. And again, I'm not condoning these studies with rats. This one in particular feels a little sketchy to me, but I'm gonna share the information. So there was a study where rats were offered either cocaine or artificial sweeteners. And the study found that the rats always chose the artificial sweetener, even if the rats were previously programmed to be cocaine addicts. Can you believe that? So the rats chose artificial sweeteners over cocaine. So for any of you that feel like you just can't break your Diet Coke habit or get rid of some of these other artificial sweeteners, there is legitimate reason for that. I mean, artificial sweet sweeteners are seriously addictive. So give yourself a little grace. It's still a good reason to get off of it, but there's a reason why it's so hard. And then Another issue with you know diet drinks, things that use artificial sweeteners like Diet Coke or Crystal Light or you know things like that, is that 
they have the sugar, the artif artificial sweetener, but then they also have other chemicals and preservatives that are like toxins in our body that are not beneficial in any way. And so I don't like adding those extra toxins to our bodies either. Okay, so we've talked about the sugar drinks, we've talked about artificial sugar. So then people often wanna know, well, what about the drinks that use healthier forms of sugar? So for example, Zevia is a popular one. I think it uses Stevia as the sweetener. And so, I mean, yes, it is a better option. It's, I guess, a healthier option, but here's my, I guess, my word of warning and just really, kind of the bottom line that I notice is that if we're constantly drinking drinks that have been sweetened in any way, whether it's with a healthier option or not, we are conditioning our taste buds to need that sweet taste. There's already enough sugar and enough sweetness in our food. And I just think that when we're drinking things that are sweet, it's just gonna trigger our palates to want to eat foods that are sweet. So in order to retrain our taste buds to get used to like and appreciate natural sweetness and things like fruit or um, vanilla, cinnamon, there's a lot of natural foods that have some natural sweetness to them, but they stop tasting sweet to us because we're used to these like really hyper palatable foods that have a lot of sweetness in them. So I even cautious caution against these drinks that are sweetened with the better options. I mean, every now and then, okay, I'm not gonna say don't ever drink it, but honestly, I don't because I, I just don't want to get used to needing that sweet flavor. And then, you know, the last concern that I have about all of these drinks that are sweetened in any way is that what happens and <laughs> is that as we are, are we, as we're drinking coffee all day long or having iced tea all day long or drinking our Crystal Light or Zevia or whatever it is, what happens is that we don't have room or time in the day to drink water. And the bottom line is we have been brainwashed to think that we can get away with drinking all these other things and still be okay. But the truth is you are made up of water. Your body needs water water to survive and to thrive and to feel good. And so, so yes, you know, we can drink other things here and there, but my challenge to you is to make water the foundation of what you drink every day. It is amazing. I, I mean, honestly, this is when I'm working with clients in my total body reset program, the first step we take, if they're not already drinking at least 64 ounces of water a day is to do that. And what I've noticed, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of one woman I worked with who was having headaches every single day and having to take Tylenol. And within a week, she realized she hadn't taken Tylenol in several days because she was drinking enough water. Or, you know, another, I, another um, gentleman that I worked with who uh, was drinking a lot or not getting enough water started drinking water and instead of needing a nap every afternoon, was able to go a few days and not need a nap. So... It is amazing how much water will help your energy, how you feel, your cravings, all kinds of things. And I know you know that, but until you actually experience the difference it can make, um, it, it, I think is surprising to a lot of people. So my challenge to you or the action step this week is to crowd out some of those sweetened drinks that you're drinking by drinking more water. Get in, make it a priority to get 64 ounces of water a day. And then, you know, if you wanna have some herbal teas here and there, if you want a cup of coffee in the morning and you know it doesn't impact you negatively, then sure, add in those things. But number one, we need to be getting enough water. So that is kind of my recommendations on what to drink, what not to drink. Like I said at the beginning, if you have questions about any particular drinks, I mean, feel free to put that in the comments and let me know. Um, and then also, if you are feeling like you are ready to kick the sugar habit so that it's easier to lose weight and reduces your risk of heart disease and diabetes, and, and just so you can feel more in control around food, but you feel like you need a little bit of support, because to be honest, it's not always easy to kick the soda habit or to even just stop eating sugar in our foods. And so if you want support with that, feel free to reach out to me. That is one of the things that I really guide people through 
step-by-step -step in my Total Body Reset program. So if you want to know more about that, just uh, send me a message or comment below and we can set up a time to chat or go to christinajohnsonwellness.com forward slash apply. And we will find a time to talk so I can get clear on what's going on for you, what your goals are with your health and weight, and also so I can determine what's stopping you from losing weight or what's stopping you from feeling good. And then if it seems like my program might be a good fit for you, I can just share what that would look like to work together so that you can decide if that would be the next best step for you. All right, thank you so much for watching today. Please let me know if you have questions or comments, and I will see you again next week. Bye for now.